you sir today speakers will be the blessed one because they have direct blessings of dr tiwari sir yes now today is 22nd webinar in cricketing terms it is double nelson and the in the history of ngh webinar this is the first time that there are three batsmen and two of them the two opening batsmen are females obviously they will not be batting together the captain will bat first followed by the disciple the assistant so dr lata devrajan and uh, see there are two female doctors female speakers from bangalore the third batsman is from tiruvananthapuram the moderator is from mumbai and the participants are from pan india and also from canada means internet we have international delegates also so welcome team welcome so start with dr lata devrajan dr lata devrajan is md organon she is a consulting physician 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 she is coordinator academics in mldmhi the ml dhawle medical hospital she is a research fellow she is a regular contributor in njh every month you will have her, her articles in it and she has a very vast very vast experience of for, the, uh, for 26 years today she will talk on bronchial asthma bronchial asthma Atish, the patient was a, how she gives uh, the newspaper newsletter every two weeks yeah of ngh yeah she is the contributor of a newsletter every two weeks she regularly gives it without any break without any break now to say, today she will talk on bronchial the management of bronchial asthma dr lata the stage is yours so uh, good evening everybody and thank you once again ngh for an opportunity it is a wonderful team that this is not that this is a wonderful team that helps all of us grow from our experiences and helps us in many areas and this opportunity for academy writing presentations administrative skills and ma'am thank you so much for being there for us all the time despite anything that you go through you always are there grateful for that ma'am and learning and shares in our group and to all the mentors at mdmhi and to a wonderful team at banglo so i hope i don't come across like an old wine in a new bottle so this type in crew include a lot more that will probably with the right. yeah, i mean if we get an epidemic or pandemic or it might help us with understanding these strategies so we keeping that in mind we have tried to build in a presentation me and dr mamta that probably help you to given you an entire range of prescriptions that can be applied in any conditions of respiratory distress so let me begin uh, most uh, what you would probably get from our presentation is the various forces that can be available to you understand the analysis of susceptibility as a tool to manage respiratory diseases and we are focusing on asthmatic bronchitis acute and chronic bronchial asthma we will also share certain planning and programming that might help you to prepare for the pandemic ahead if it affects children so let's first quickly run through and brush up our memories on uh, bronchial asthma in children it's usually serious the lung and the airway get inflamed when exposed to a very triggering pollen or a respiratory sensitive virus which usually affects less than 5 years in a condition that's called bronchiolitis and it's followed by spasms or it can be dry or with increased mucus and mucus secretion there's a strong genetic uh, predisposing in some children we also have emotional stressors suppressions and sensitivity in some children that these attacks uh, the symptoms all of us are familiar with in what are the long term problems children face with asthma they are unable to play outside lead a very uh, normal functional life because of their poor ability to exert sleep patterns the fatigueness and generally a very dependent state both on their inhalers as well as their respiratory support so uh, what is important here which we learned from our sir uh, because i just had some 
have shared with us and Astani sir keeps sharing with us inputs on what are the objective data that we need to keep in mind for any respiratory distress conditions. Make note of the generals, the appetite, sleep, and the weakness, the chest weakness, objective signs like abdominal breathing, long thigh rals in each quadrant of the lung, the alertness of the mind or they're slowly slipping into a state of drowsiness. Monitor their oxygen, the respiratory rate, and the pulse rate, and you will know whether they will be able to be managed at home with our medications. So, mostly the bronchial asthma comes in the airway diseases, which are hypersensitive airway diseases and can result in an acute asthmatic bronchitis. Uh, sometimes, even a foreign body aspiration can mimic this condition. We also have other conditions like pneumonia and pleura affections like pneumonia, bronchopneumonia, emphysema, and pulmonary edema. Why I'm sharing is all these conditions cause respiratory distress. And our topic is going to deal with respiratory distress due to bronchial asthma, both chronic and acute. Now let me go to what kind of forces are available to the homeopathic physician. So in that we have, let's just revisit our master. Um, in his aphorism of 74 and 75, he says that chronic diseases have a relapsing acute states, which are usually periodic. Acute spikes followed by symptomatic intervals or subacute phase. And usually it will be chronic diseases grow on individual soils. And it will be the constitutional types, the miasm, the susceptibility, which decides when the volcano will erupt. So we are dealing with the first type of susceptibility. Here, the acute episode requires an acute medicine prescribed on totality based on symptoms, location, modality, and concomitants. And we are going to give importance to the pace, the evolution, the pathophysiology, and its remedy relationship. Now, let, let us start with the first case. Here, we had a child of five years. He comes down with a loud barking cough, worse at night, worse inspiration, and with a very difficult and labored breathing, but stable. Respiratory rate is 40. Oxygen, oxygen saturation is 95. Worse in cold weather, better by drinking something warm. And the, there's a you know, wheezing like a whistling sound. Any remedies that are coming to your that box. So most will, you know, look at remedies like spongia, bryonia, drosera. These are the things. What is important is when we get an acute episode like this, yeah, see the re repertory references, it's indicating these kind of remedies, spongia, phosphorus, hepar, bryonia, aconite. So what, what was one thing that was very important in our differential diagnosis of remedies was understand the pathophysiology of the dry spasm or with a lot of mucus secretion. This allows us to come to a group of remedies. From there, you can go to the mental generals and the physical generals and the modalities. So in our case, what we found was this was a dry, loud constriction sound Worse in, the cold, worse in the cold, worse at midnight, and better by then. And he had a state of very dull, alternating moods. The next challenge came is, now that I understood spongia here, not the phosphorus or the bryonia, the next challenge came is, is this also the chronic totality I'm facing? Or is this just an acute episode that needs only spongia? When we evolved the case, what came across was a very calcarea child. This was not the state in which he was when the acute subsided. And what is the remedy relationship? When we look up Boninghausen's therapeutic pocket book, you find that spongia is complementary to the acute calcarea. So this was very important to us in our understanding of the first type of susceptibility, where it clear cut gave you the acute totality and the chronic. So how, how was the response in such cases? He needed only in two or three episodes, he needed the spongia, which was given on January and March 2021. Calcarea carb continued weekly. Within three to four months, we were able to gradually reduce the intensity of the attack. 
and the frequency he has been observed till date and there have been no attacks. <coughs> the concept of management and acute form that came up requires 24 to 48 hours to resolve. Pay attention to the relationship. Do not change your prescription of acute and be clear on your blocks of acute and chronic. And attention to the evolution, remedy relationship, and that will help you crack the case. Now, the second type of susceptibility. You get a very distinct acute totality, and you get that the acute totality is matching so much with the chronic totality. In such cases, the responses are very quick. We need very infrequent doses, as this particular remedy is covering from predisposition to disposition to the myism to the expression. So I would like to share a case where I learned from my mistake. This is a child of six years suffering from recurrent attacks of bronchial asthma. He was on a daily dose of inhalers. And when the acute came, he would be put on nebuliz nebulizations. Sometimes it would be infective bronchitis and that required antibiotics. So we have a case that will have an acute episode every three to four weeks, which will never touch the baseline and which will require him to be on continuous medications. Obviously, it was affecting his... Uh, state of activity, sleep, and a very clingy child holding on to the environment. The clear-cut acute totality was dry cough, wheezing, nausea, thirstlessness, and irritability. All of us would have come to APCA. Now the challenge was the mistake that I did. Every time I gave APCA during the acute, we were able to bring down the attack in 24 years. We, we also paid attention to all the objective data that were taught to us. And then came the problem. When I introduced tuberculinum as a uh, constitutional chronic remedy, there was a very severe aggravation and it did not help this child. I had to go back to EPCAC to solve the episode. Again, I reviewed my case. Where did I go wrong? It was obvious that I had not clearly repertorized or understood the depth of this child. It was very hyperactive. Or, you know, you can easily get confused with tubercular hyperactive. Playful and difficult to please. It's easily distracted. Needs to be constantly stimulated. Very irritable and peevish disposition. Parents are dentists and easily given to her demands. Teachers say they're very difficult to make her sit in one place. And really jealous. She's a leader with her friends and they usually listen to her and give in to her. Any inputs on the chronic remedy in the chat box? I can't see the chat box, so if somebody would like to volunteer and share what they are telling, it would be nice. Okay, so the we one is mentioned Natrimure. Natrimure. So what is important is let us repetize this case. And you will find Epicat, the acute remedy, covers so beautifully the chronic brutality, which got completely mixed up with our other remedies, which were already preconceived in our hands. So what is EPCAC like? A rubiaceae family with irritability, capriciousness, peevishness, and very characteristic physical generals of thirstlessness and nausea with a very dry wheeze. So EPCAC as a chronic remedy, which also came up with a very acute form. And just see the response. Within 192 to 242, we were able to gradually withdraw the uh, inhalers which he was on uh, since he was on a steroid dependent inhaler we had to bring it down after three weeks and then make it once in two days and then gradually withdraw depending on the episodes but because it covered the entire predisposition to a soric and a psychotic state to the disposition and the expression epicac was able to hold the case in the next five months so now we'll extend this learning to another similar case. The patient comes with severe dry cough, breathlessness, dribbling of urine during cough, cough every day with wheezing sounds, and very important, the wheeze and the cough is only during insertion. And when he coughs so Lata, loudly, he has dribbling of urine. Doctor Lata, sorry, five minutes more. Yeah. What is interesting minutes. here is that the characteristics are very high. We find that the type of totality is present 
in this kind of expression it's very important we represent and you will find veratrum are covering most of these why did veratrum are cover both the acute and chronic look at the mental state of this child the child comes from a middle class family pamper never scolded just like our previous child restless hyperactive demanding what is interesting here what was the stress in the lockdown the covid lockdown did not give her an outlet to go out and play and release her channelized energies that was all the time very this resulted in the child becoming violent biting feigning sickness and never wanting to attend the online classes so the remedy became very clear to us that this is a case how many cases do we have where the wheeze in a child is with an involuntary urination and with this exertional dyspnea not many it's very important every symptom becomes pqrs for us when we sit when we go for epi and with this characteristic mental state what we found the remedy response was equally dramatic this child was not on any kind of medicines he was he had come to us only since some months after the lockdown. so it was very easy for us to help him recover within two months and in frequent doses of veratrum now the third type which is just an experiential sharing is cases of bronchial asthma where there is a strong family history of children coming with both atopic eczema alternating with bronchial asthma the deep nosodes help to recover the case earlier i used to make a strong mistake of using acilinum with constitution or with acute or tuberculinum however what is important here is just wait and observe and see whether you can keep the bacillinum on for a few months without really changing the prescription tuberculinum aviar is also another anosode in allergy and hypersensitive reactions that i have used and we find that we wait and observe with deep acting nosodes without quickly changing prescriptions these children who have a strong family history and alternating states of eczema and bronchial asthma respond very quickly so feel things from what i have presented before giving to dr mamta every child is unique every child has a unique susceptibility that those forms only homeopathy has an ability to individualize cases of course we need a multi system integrated approach when we deal with respiratory stresses nobody is denying that every system is superior in its own way we study multifactorial causations to expressions and simulum helps to recover the susceptibility we have adequate armors to deal with the challenge now i will hand over to dr mamta she will be sharing another type of system that will also help you to deal with this problem thank you dr lata uh just what is discussion डॉक्टर ममता यू कैन कम इन हेलो डॉक्टर ममता जस्ट मिनट मैम डॉक्टर ममता कुमार अगेन फ्रॉम बेंगलुरु फ्रॉम पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी आई सी आर ट्रेन एंड मेंबर फ्रॉम एम एल डी एम एच आई कंसल्टिंग फिजिशियन एट अगेन एम एल डी एम एच आई and she has been contributing articles to njh practicing in and she is practicing in bangalore since 2005 dr mamta please welcome just a question nadi nod bhai ne stop your other yes sir Hello. Audible? Am I audible, sir? Hello, two comments. Yeah, you audible, doctor. You audible. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, good evening, everybody. Uh, before starting, I want to thank Dr. Vishpala, ma'am, and NJH team for giving me this opportunity to present my cases on this huge platform. And I want to pay my gratitude towards Father of Homeopathy, Dr. Samuel Hanuman, and ML Dawale, sir. up to now you have uh, you have heard various types of the susceptibility susceptibility in the bronchial asthma now i am presenting the different type of susceptibility to my 
through my cases. So here I'm just let's share mode F7. Let's share. Huh? Yeah, that's it. So here I'm presenting my cases. So I'm starting case number one. Here the child is of seven years of age, and uh, uh, he came with his mother. Mother was quite anxious as she what is the child with in the acute state of wheezing. The child is already on the nebulization of the with steroids and astelin, and along with the course of antibiotics. Last few months, due to changes in the weather, the child was getting attack every two weeks, and he was on the bedocart already and with acute the super added infection. On examination, I found it out that there was a wrong kind all quadrants. The abdominal breathing was there, respiratory rate was forty, and the oxygen saturation was ninety five. He was uh, uh, on the nebulization every four hourly. So I thought that there was not clear cut symptoms. So if, uh, I thought, let me understand the case first before prescribing. So then I took the chief complaints. While taking the chief complaint, I observed there are the very common symptoms like sneezing, cold, nose block, dry cough, fever, breathlessness, wheezing, and uh, uh, along with that, the common modalities. But there was the wheezing, even though the child was on Budaka two puffs daily. The wheezing was not coming down, and there was a slight striking concomitants that sleep disturbed due to cough. Child was very clingy and dull and irritable. Thirst was quite increased, and there was constantly a mild undergoing skin complaint. And since long time, but a very mild one, which was subsided uh, with the steroid cream. And uh, then I started the uh, full case taking. in the physical generals uh, what what came first that in my mind that there was a stood first was the desire for sweet milk and milk products and the sweating on the head and body profuse their dreams were fearful and child was hot and uh, the throughout the uh, pregnancy the mother was very anxious because of the she had a fear of abortion even though the child was premature but milestones were quite normal then i started understanding the child as a patient so uh, I, when i interacted with the child the child was very shy he was clinging to his mother he was nodding his head whenever i used to ask any questions to him so his mother shared that he is very talkative at home but and one striking uh, symptom she said that he, he laughs while talking he likes singing dancing very sensitive and he cries for small small things also like if parents are you if uh, if it's a little baby sister who is 5 years old he, if she doesn't obey him then also he cries and he likes to play with the pet animals he is very hyperactive and whenever he gets uh, irritable that will be few hugs and cuddles he feels very uh, better and he forgets his anger and uh, he runs and cycling and basketball he likes so i will dub the totality on this so mental generals and the physical generals in that that child is sensitive mild fearful talks in sleep dreams frightful and the physicals like cough lying down aggravated aggravated in night better by open air and the hot patient after repetition i got many remedies like arsenic sulf pulsatilla calcarea fos tuberculinum silica but uh, mm, after a uh, uh, after the materia medica i start i choose the pulsatilla because these were the indications yeah. there were the affection of mucus membrane child was very mild timid and tearful and he used to like the fuss and caresses fear of dark and the capricious nature like uh, uh, easily moved to tears and laughter and he was answering yes or no by nodding the head so after the uh, after uh, choosing the pulsatilla then uh, it is a ranunculaceae of ranunculaceae family it is called as a wind flower because the changeability is like a, uh, depending on the wind like that the child is also the changeable mind like weeping alternates with the tears and uh, child is very um, yeah, mild yielding vp type and uh, hold quite well to the environment and gets whatever he wants by asking the parents and uh, when i started differentiating with the 
other drugs that uh, child even though child is very uh, mild and uh, very having the delicate skin and all but he is not like a phosphorus very expressive type and wanted to be center of attention and even though he is very thin and lean thin and timid but he was not uh, i didn't feel like he is uh, like a silica because he was not like obstinate stubborn he is very mild and vp yielding type adjusted to the environment adapted to the environment like that and uh, i didn't feel like calcarea ka because this child he is not very curious type that calcarea ka child start uh, touching everything in the clinic curiosity is very evident in the calcarea ka children but this child is very uh, mild and uh, clinging to his mother he was sitting at uh, beside his mother only he was not roaming here and there in the clinic so that's why i started with the pulsatilla so child was very comfortable so i defined the case and kept her, kept him on the placebo after two days step, step da kho na mala ala pahije two days mala ala pahije zero by two frequent doses so why i chose the zero by two because uh, uh, i thought if uh, i didn't get the clear cut lsmc so acute totality was matching pulsatilla so i thought i should give one chronic medicine that will in the frequent doses should cover the sector as well as the chronic totality so i wanted to give a remedy that covers the chronic totality and ensure the susceptibility that gradually recovers and can we can slowly withdraw the buda card so that we don't get any acute exacerbations so i started pulsatilla 0 by 2 daily two weeks along with the inhaler because i didn't want to take a chance and then uh, after two weeks i started uh, tapering the inhalers by alternate day and two days once and uh, like like that i tapered it off and then uh, the uh, he was the withdrawn inhaler but there was a month of october so so the till january there is a very cold in bangalore so um, child is very prone to cold and get aggravated with the cold weather so uh, subsequently he was the uh, with uh, pulsatilla 0 by 2 for 3 4 months and then we uh, i uh, uh, i stopped the pulsatilla and followed him for a year and the child was absolutely normal so why i continued the same potency because child was continuously getting the better and there was no exacerbations and uh, no wheezing so throughout that potency the the, the pulsatilla 0 by 2 is holding the child very Uh, very nicely and uh, i that's why i shouldn't i didn't get the uh, potency change and that uh, i along with the i stopped the inhaler simultaneously so that's why the even though in the weather was cold the child was not getting in, affected with that so that's why i didn't change the pulsatilla then uh, in the case the case to using the same principles whatever the application of the concepts i uh, did uh, in the case one i uh, i got the similar concepts uh, here also the actually this child is a 3 years old boy and he was already on the flu box flu block with the steroid once a day one spray and with the montel day and uh, since 6 months of age the frequency was very um, very 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 uh, much that every 15 days he used to get affected with the Uh, acute infections and the cold used to travel in the lungs within a two one to two days and uh, there is also again the common symptoms like uh, he used to start with the sneezing and cold and nose block and the uh, wheezing and the uh, fever occasionally in the uh, acute uh, infections used to get the fever at that time he has to manage with the leolin and the budate and along with the antibiotics and uh, here also the um, concomitant was sleep disturb and uh, cough because of the cough so among the physical general what i uh, uh, got it as a desire for spicy fried and the citrus fruits which was uh, actually aggravated his complaints and he also has the sweating on the head neck and palms and so so because when i interacted with the child that time he he has a sweaty palms and uh, child is very chilly and very lean and thin with the cold palms so milestones was very normal and uh, the only talking the sentences is little late so i started understanding the child as it is so child was quite intelligent and uh, 
but very shy in the nature. When I interacted the child in the clinic, that child used to talk, uh, used to whisper in his mother's ears, and uh, he was uh, continuously looking down, not at all looking at me. And child is quite sensitive. He was. Uh, the mother was sharing that he he gets uh, he cries when the parents uh, simply scold him or he is very obedient that if the because i had seen in the clinic that the child was sitting beside his mother he was not any uh, like uh, wandering here and uh, like uh, other children and she said that he if he tells the, if she tells him not to watch tv so he doesn't watch the tv also and if she he she says uh, keep his uh, toys neatly so he keeps them in their places and um, uh, but he is very shy he doesn't mingle the children with the other children easily he is very afraid of the strangers he start crying if he says this, any uh, his uh, his parents uh, friends and all so he has a quite fears like a being alone dark strangers and loud sound so among with that i built up the totality uh, because particulars were not very striking so i had taken the only mind mind and the physical so mind was like a timid and fear of dark fear of strangers obedient stubborn conscientious and physical as a chilly desire for sour citrus fruit and fried food perspiration on the palms so after repetition there were many rem remediation came up remedy that calcarea silicate ha sulfur kalika so i already differentiated with the calcarea silicata and phos uh, phosphorus so i had taken the other remedies uh, and uh, i selected the silica on on the uh, base of these uh, indications like uh, how that child was getting allergy so frequently so is so very sensitive physically as well as mentally and uh, the every cold was settling in the chest that uh, gives him the asthmatic symptoms and the child is very mild and conscientious and uh, timid and uh, he is suffering from malnutrition not because of food lacking but from the defective assimilation and his child is very chilly and having the uh, perspiration on the palms and soles and the uh, i had observed that asthma in children of the psychotic parents that is the uh, from kent's materia medica so i selected the silica depending on the indications indicia bada re silica is a mineral remedy it is a group 4 from the periodic table and uh, it is a uh, has the mineral qualities of organization order and a fast digestion and the pattern of choice and identity family rate mother lies in the middle of row means he knows what he wants but he is not able to do he is too concerned about his image my name is psychotic so uh, i took the material uh, identification between the carcinosin and kalika because he is very conscientious and uh, mild uh, like the carcinosin i felt but carcinosin is very perfectionist and uh, uh, very anxious about the health but he that precocity not uh, precocity is very characteristic in the carcinosin which i didn't found, find in this child and the sensitivity to reprimands is also very evident in the carcinosin which is not here that's why a carcinosin i didn't select and the kalika carb that kalika has a they can't uh, keep the low profile they are very attention dr mamta 5 minutes more dr mamta 5 yeah. minutes more participants yes, please mute yourself their demands are not met with the anxiety so they they show the some psychological expressions like a bed waiting sleep talking and stammering and all this so kali so, gives the family and full full of his genuine disturb the relations he get a class of so why i selected the millisimal because the sensitivity of the mind and body was very high the cases have the both both the cases have the allergy and the infective components both the cases have the steroid dependent having the frequent attacks and needed the remedy to be given so frequently so that the susceptibility gradually recovers and gradually withdraw the we can withdraw the steroids so millisimal will allow to this safety transit so which is i explained now only so that sensitivity high and the the, the pathology was uh, functional and the fundamental and the dominant myelom psychotic that's why millisimal was selected so again in this uh, in this case also i started with silica 0 by 2 daily and i didn't uh, stop the flublock and uh, monter immediately after 15 days i started 
uh, tapering the monter first and then uh, after the monter i stop and then i flew block i started the uh, tapering down and in between he has to he uh, he got very uh, mild fever and little bit cold so i thought that uh, the same potency is not holding the uh, uh, problem that's why i started with silica zero bar c and again in between also he had a very mild infection and not infection only the cold and fever and uh, i started with the silica zero bar 6 so like uh, at the time sometimes the acute disease do, doesn't show the clear uh, clear cut picture so because that susceptibility is overwhelmed by the disease and symptoms are more of the chronic totality so constitutional features itself come up with calling as a constitutional prescribing so strategies uh, concluded that ki how the constitutional remedy in the frequent doses of steroid dependent bronchial asthma help us to gradually withdraw the dependence and there are no episodes of acute even uh, and therefore the we didn't use the acute and the withdrawal takes um, at least a month or more than that and depending on the weather and other stresses and the potency in milesimal help gentle recovery with the hypersensitivity of the mind and the airway disease and according to aporism 2 the rapid gentle and permanent restoration of the health happens this is a testimonial of patient's mother hello everyone i want to tell you about arsan akash who is currently 10 years old during his early age that was around 3 years he used to fall sick very often it used to start with cold followed by wheezing the very next day they were giving a lot of nebulization and prolonged inhalers they were tired of giving him regular doses of steroids and antibiotics which was as frequent as daily we then started with homeopathic treatment to dr mamta this helped significantly and the intensity as well as the frequency of wheezing came down drastically He is absolutely normal since last four to five years, and can eat all cold things like ice cream and chocolates. Now he very rarely falls sick or gets cold. Thank you, doctor. So here is Akash. Hello. Thank you. Hello, Hello everyone. Sir. So this is the conclusion that understanding the stage of the disease and pathology and symptoms are very important along with the susceptibility. and the treatment of the acute and the chronic bronchitis with our courses so thank you i just want to thank again to dr vishpala ma'am and the jenjay singh for the wonderful opportunity thank you for to mld mhi team of all my sirs and ma'am of bombay faculty thank you lata ma'am for helping in my growth thank you ramdas sir from bangalore and for guiding me always and all my colleagues for continuous journey excellent thank you sir Thank you, Dr. Mamta. Thank you very much.